A couple of years ago, I left my office job. I decided to become the apprentice grower at this community farm. Uh, everything's been going really well. I've been learning loads and the project as a whole has been really growing and improving all the time. But uh, we've come across a real big problem. Uh, our tenancy's run out and we're gonna have to find a new place to carry on the farming. So we're a, a reasonably small CSA, that's a community supported agricultural project. Um, and we've been on this site now for about six years. Um, we've been given notice. Uh, so we've got about a year, just over a year left now before we have to be off the site. We're searching for, for some new land uh, every which way we can think of. Because, you know, in this area, land is at such a high premium for housing. And if it's not used for building on, somebody will put their horses on it. How would you go about looking for land? How, how do you work? Sorry, I didn't hear. How do you go about looking for land? Yeah, how do you say? Do you want to, do you want to say that? I don't know, really. I mean, do I do? I know the idea. Sure, there's land all around us, but until you need it, you don't realise how difficult it is to access, especially for ecological farming. We need good soil for food, and let's face it, we've got a lot of good intentions, but not a lot of cash. So how do we get hold of some land? What about those of us that weren't born into farming and need to start from scratch? I'm an apprentice on the Soil Association's course, The Future Growers. I knew I was due a meeting with my mentor, so I thought I'd take my question there. Hi, Gavin. What I didn't know is that my question was about to be turned into a giant learning project. So how was your field trip? Excellent. No, really good one. Uh, very inspiring. Mm. And did you learn anything about land? Because I know that you've got some issues about, about Farnham local food and how and where you're going in the future with your land. Uh, we're struggling there still. We've, we've, asked about, we've been asking about uh, landlords, local landlords, and um, just trying to put feelers out and see if anyone knows of any potential land available. And at the moment, we're, we're not getting anywhere this, this year. We talk a lot about sustainable food and local food, but one of the things that we often forget is that you need that land yes. to be to be actually farming and growing your food and keeping your livestock on. Yep. And that's one of the things that we quite often overlook is actually how, how you go about getting your hands on some land. So we're working with all these other European organisations to find out what people are doing in different countries, what the problems are, how they're addressing them. So we're actually looking for somebody who can go out and visit some of these projects and see what works. So all across Europe, small-scale farms are disappearing. Our community project could just become another statistic if we can't find a new site to grow our crops on. And it's an international problem. Farmland is changing hands and not to the benefit of ecological farming. But communities are reacting to this problem and some of them are turning into movements. So a lot of different people are working on this from a variety of perspectives. And me, I'm going to document the start of a European network, one that wants to make sure that ecological farmers can get access to farmland. France, Catalonia, Italy, Romania and the UK all have voices to share, with our first stop right here in the United Kingdom. Like me, Kate Collins was just recently a future grower apprentice and she also struggled to find land herself. But now she has secured a couple of acres for her own ecologically minded business. So did you, did you consider buying land? Everyone's like, you don't own this farm, do you? Do I enjoy it? Do you own this farm? It's your farm. <laughs> no, it's not my farm. I wish it was my farm. I'd love to own my own land one day, but it's just, just the price of it is just so impractical. I remember looking five years ago at the average prices of horticultural arable land, and it was already at an average of about £12,000 an acre. £12,000 an acre? And that's over the whole of the country, and where, where I am now, sort of southwest. The sort of size that I'm after, so again, sort of a couple of acres, it all gets sold for pony paddocks. Where I am now, I, I rent off the farm um, and I have a really good deal of a rent. Um, like I say, the, the farm is support, really supportive. Yeah, yeah, so it's it's kind of like, you know, like a, a token rent. So yeah, I think, although it's it, the dream is, you know, the good life, having your own small holding, having your own land. Um, 
I don't think there's any problem at all with having a good landlord that you can rent from and who can help you out as well as providing the land, you know, with some other resources like some infrastructure or machinery or whatever, or routes to market. So by renting land from an existing farm, Kate can use part of its infrastructure, like storage and water. But this is a negotiation with a particular type of landowner. Not only are they supportive of ecological growing, they also have a great connection with a market of consumers, with a farm shop of their own, right there on site. I can give you that one. Yep, no worries. Now I think what you've done here, Kate, is, uh, is amazing. You've, you've found or created an opportunity for yourself. My delivery route. I am a tenant, essentially, so I pay my farmer, my landlord, rent. This is a shop and cafe that does really need a young grower. And I sell the produce as an independent business to the farm shop and cafe, um, which keeps things quite nice and straightforward. Yeah. I'm a tenant and a... Supplier? Yeah. It's a two-way business relationship yeah, as well. Exactly. In the UK, we have an unregulated land market. So to access land, we have to compete with housing developments, horses, uh, well, and prices are just driven too high for the likes of us on our own. Over the channel in France, there's a completely different situation for farmers. Land prices are kept lower by regulating the market more carefully. But even lower prices aren't enough to start up ecological farms. We're here to meet a civic movement that takes land out of the market altogether to put it permanently in the hands of ecological farmers. Hi, Sirit. Hello, welcome to Rocher Ancan. Thank you very uh, much. Sit down. Thank you kindly. Oh, what a beautiful place. This is stunning. This is absolutely magical. It wasn't always like that. We had a, did a lot of work on it. Yeah. So I'm a, a new entrant into the world of farming um, and I've been invited along uh, to, to see if I can learn some lessons from uh, other places around Europe. As, uh... you, of course, of course. If you, uh, if you want to do something new, the first thing is to look if there are other people who are doing the same thing. So I think this is a very good, it's a very uh, clever idea to, to go elsewhere and look what is happening there. So you think I can learn a few, a few things to take back home from, from this trip? Oh yes, from us and from, uh, from in other countries. There are a lot of young people who want to do, to become farmer in, in a new way and they have uh, neither the money nor, the, nor the, the relations, nor the farms. They are not coming from, a, from an agricultural background. And uh, how can we help them to, uh, to establish something? And that is, uh, the, the real idea is to, uh, to of Terre de and it started like that, is just looking for citizens who are ready to, to take shares in a solidarity investment company who is, uh, who is buying land for these people. Cool, a solidarity fund so that citizens can connect with farming. Terre de Lyon has already mobilised thousands of citizens and bought more than 130 farms, creating links that go from the consumers to the farmers and all the way to the food. I do a bit of everything here, so there are fruits, des fruits, fruits. C'est Terre de Liens qu'il a acheté avec l'épargne populaire. Euh, moi, je suis juste locataire, je suis un fermier. Donc, euh, j'ai un bail environnemental de carrière et je dois travailler en agriculture biologique. Un uh, non-agricultural non farmer. Yeah. I don't have to, uh, to ask for my bank, to ask for um, a boss, to ask for any, anyone. You're not working for a banker. Yeah. You're working for people, yes. real people. So it, it's their savings. Yeah, you, yeah. It's just amazing. <laughs> the strength it gives to you. It's, uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the main reason is that they want something concrete for their uh, their money. When they let money in uh, in a bank, it goes for uh, weapons, 
for uh, I don't know uh, yeah, of, of kind of yeah. bad things. <laughs> As I always said, uh, uh, my form is not going to go to Luxembourg. <laughs> it will stay. <laughs> How old are you? Uh, I'm 30, 38 years old now. Okay. I'm new to farming, so um, I was graphic design before, doing graphic design for 15, 20 years. Um, and yeah, just a bit of a change. And you? Uh, you? 39. 39? Yeah. And it's a, it's a late change. It is a late change, yeah. 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 It's fine. In my former life, uh, I had much more income. Uh, I had uh, two cars, uh, we, we bought a house, uh, it was uh, an easy life with money. Uh, but this, with this job I have few money, but uh, in a long term vision I know it will get better and better and better. Because you just put one seed in the soil, you get an hundred. Just amazing. No, nothing can do this uh, except in, uh, in nature. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's brilliant, isn't it? So you don't feel that you're much... And to think that this land was about to be sold for housing development before Christoph stepped in. And now, with the support of Ted Ilya, he's an ecological farmer with a permanent tenancy. Compared to back home where, well, we've lost our farm, haven't we? How can two neighbouring countries have such different views on farming? I talked to George Monbiot, the writer on ecological issues about our disconnection from the land. He explained how, over time, land ownership has been concentrated into fewer and fewer hands. One of the reasons why historically France had so much higher food quality and much higher, um, much better nutritional rates than the rest of it than, than, than the UK was that France had its revolution at the same time as we had our enclosure movement. And their revolution was followed by land reform. Our enclosure movement caused the opposite effect, this massive land concentration. Um, the people in this country all got crowded into the cities. Britain was the first largely urbanised nation on earth, uh, where more than 50% of the population were living in, in, in cities. Um, their food was being supplied by massive distant landowners who had no compunction at all about mixing their grain with, with chalk and you know, all sorts of terrible food adulteration which has been going on in this country for a very long time, putting lead acetate in the cider to sweeten it and all. I mean, it was just like horrible, horrible things because they weren't accountable to the people that they were selling to. It was just all sort of put into the generalised market and you as a consumer were completely vulnerable to this. You were at the mercy of whatever crap they were selling to you. Well, when in France, by contrast, you had these very distinctive local food cultures, you had very high standards of growing, high standards of cooking and all the rest of it because people were connected to that, you had accountability between the sellers and their customers. Um, and and when, you, when you break that link um, through the consolidation of land ownership and the pushing out of, 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 of the people who were on the land, um, and the concentration of the population into a few big cities, which is what we had in the 19th century, um, then you, you have all sorts of knock-on effects, many of which lead to malnutrition, both undernourishment and obesity, which we're still suffering from today. You know, it's why Britain still has massive problems with these issues. This is a historical hangover of the enclosure movement, and the enclosure movement is still continuing in this country through the consolidation of land. So people like you who are trying to reforge the links between um, production and consumption, trying to rebuild a local market, are, are, you're, you're swimming against the tide here. You're, you're, you're really struggling against 200 years of history uh, which has been all about breaking those links, all, all about shutting people like you out of the market, shutting the customers out of, of, of the production chain and making us subservient to this transnational corporations who are feeding us rubbish. But onwards and upwards, 
on a journey across France and into the Catalonian Pyrenees, where the ancient tradition of shepherding is disappearing. It's happening all across Europe. Farmers grow old with their children not following in their footsteps. That's literally thousands of years of tradition that could die with them. To keep the heritage alive, Rubans, a shepherding school, is making the tradition available to people like Anna, who isn't from a farming background, but wants to do the job. I didn't know anything about ovejas, I didn't have land, I didn't know anything, nada, completely nothing, nada, and it's been to start from zero. I went to the school of pastors, I did four months of practice, so when I felt prepared, it was when I started with the mine. It's sacrificed, but it's what it's really fills me, really. But passing on the skills simply isn't enough for the new shepherds if they don't have land for their sheep as well. So Rubans is forging links between the generations to help new shepherds access land. What happens here usually is when one farmer retires, the farmer uh, neighbor takes this land, rent so this land. So the next door neighbor would, yes. would So grow. what is happening, yes, it's, it's uh, the same situation ar around the grow, world, grow, no? Grow and yes, the, the, exactly. And what would you like to, what sort of sizes do you think is, is a, a more healthy way of farming sheep here? For us, the projects that are linked to the organic production, having to account the, the improvement of the land and also to achieve the, uh, the financial uh, viability. The place that we are now is an example of what we are doing, of this uh, work of finding land. In this case, the farmer uh, wants to be retired and he wants to give the opportunity to a young uh, person to, to manage this space, to manage their flock. And that means a farm succession uh, okay. between a farmer that is going to be retired. And in this case, uh, ex-students of the School of Shepherds, Laura. Uh, Laura will be the farmer, will be the peasant. And we are going to take part uh, in it, uh, managing the commercialization. So you will be helping her with, with the actual business side of things, as opposed, so she can concentrate on being a shepherd exactly. and being a farmer. Hay dos tipos grandes de problemas para mí. Uno, los evidentes, ¿no? La, la, el acceso a la tierra, eh, las, el, las infraestructuras que necesitas que requiere de mucha inversión económica. Eh, esto por un lado. Luego, por otro, el, el poder aprender las cosas que necesitas para vivir del día a día del campo y demostrar constantemente casi que, que puedes valer para hacer lo que ellos hacen diariamente, aunque no hayas nacido o no tengas vínculos con, con el sector. Si ponen toda la fuerza del mundo, puede desarrollar lo mismo que yo hago, lo mismo. Claro, al cabo de un tiempo, no el primer día. No, eso es lógico. Si tiene que estar uno al lado y apoyándolo y, y día a día cómo lo tiene que hacer, más o menos, más o menos, porque ya estoy convencido que muchas cosas que yo hago ella no lo hará. Y yo lo voy a respetar. In Rome, I couldn't believe that only 20 minutes after seeing the Colosseum, I'd be back in the countryside again. That's because half of the land of this ancient city's municipality is actually farmland. And a lot of it is owned by public institutions, so it's public land. Martin De Piro from the Organic Agriculture Association wants to show us how public land can actually be used for the public good. So we're not in England, ours are barely producing. Look at these. Overflowing. We're up to nearly two metres high. The size of these aubergine plants, they're huge. Look at all this produce. Super fresh. Still got uh, zucchinis with their flower heads on, or courgettes as we say in England. Some funky looking ones as well. Um, and it's all produced just a few metres from here. 
So public land should be used to do the best of the farming that you can have at the moment. The best of the public? The best of the public, yeah. So organic, sustainable, social farming, uh, farming should employ people mm -hmm. with solar energy, direct marketing. It all sounded too easy. I didn't think most governments would simply be granting new farmers access to public land. I was right. They squatted it. In the 70s in Italy, there was a movement of access to land. A group of, uh, of people decided to preserve the land from urbanization. They arrived on the land, they broke the chain and they squatted. And from the first day, with the help of a neighbor farmer, they started farming. They're still doing it on public land after 38 years. Bisogna be mettere nelle condizioni coloro che hanno la terra e non la usano e coloro che non hanno la terra e vorrebbero usarla di poterlo fare. Il problema è chi è che è in grado di poter fare questa operazione. Le occupazioni ormai sono tempo anche da noi, non so da voi, ma anche da noi ormai sono tempi sono cose dei tempi passati, oggi quello che si è fatto negli anni 70 di occupare la terra e tutto sommato rimanerci sostanzialmente è una roba che oggi non si può più percorrere sostanzialmente e quindi esiste, esiste la necessità di trovare una, una strada, una forma alternativa. And searching for alternative paths to public land is exactly what Marta's generation has been doing. It was only a few years ago when the government announced it would sell off a large amount of public land. A young network of organisations decided to act and stop the sale, so it could remain a public asset. E insieme abbiamo chiesto alle amministrazioni eh, di poter accedere a questo patrimonio perché questo patrimonio era dimenticato in qualche modo, non era proprio utilizzato, non era preso in considerazione per lo sviluppo futuro. The network of organizations negotiated with the local authorities for several years to put this land into good use. Finally, a call to tender which was open to the new farmers was issued. And here we have the wooden proposal from the cooperative Coraggio, ready to move in to start their new farm. Ah, no, no, no. Do I put the chain on, do you reckon? Yeah. Okay, I'll just hook it. Lovely. It may have taken years of putting pressure on the local authorities, but they have managed to unlock unused public land and put ecological farmers on it. Our journey continues east for one more stop. Here in Romania, farming is a way of life and peasant families make up about a quarter of the population. But an overwhelming change has recently put them and the environment under threat. Eco Ruralis is a peasant organisation and Attila wants us to meet the peasants that are holding ground against an invasion. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, in Romania peasant farming is still the, the main farming uh, form of organisation. Basically peasant communities they uh, they form uh, they they basically have lands all over their villages. Mm -hmm. This is how they subsist. This is how they produce their daily needs. Uh, it's very different. Maybe this is from the UK that Romania has a very large peasant effective. Yeah, yeah. So we have almost five million peasants okay. uh, in Romania. Right. Which is basically when Romania got into higher levels, like on the EU, brought this beautiful heritage mm -hmm. of these millions of subsistence farmers and semi-subsistence farmers still producing for their own needs and for local markets. So how would you describe a peasant uh, farmer? How does that Ah, good morning. Good morning. Yeah. <laughs> how, how would you define um, a peasant farmer then? It was... Peasant farmer, if we define it a little bit uh, just uh, dimension-wise, 
Peasant farming is what you can see like this, basically smaller plots of land owned by, by farming communities, farming people mm -hmm. from the local villages and basically it's polycultural. So then you have, the, then you have uh, uh, corn, you have barley, you have wheat, you have others. This is outside of the, of the village. Yeah. And then of course inside, more inside of the village, you have the vegetable plot. Peasant farming is a mixed farming. These peasant farmers, with their small plots, together hold an enormous asset. But over the last couple of years, the Romanian land market has been opened up, offering this fertile land for low prices to everyone, including foreign investors, who are rushing in. Yet some farmers, like Dan Chismus, are determined not to sell out, but instead keep the land for food. Ideea este să, să fie păstrat cât mai mult posibil în contact cu pământul, pentru că uh, toate, tot ce, ce trece prin mâna omului, practic este cu mult mai bun decât ceea ce, să zic, fac mașinile sau chimicalele. Sau, și uh, asta, asta cred că e ideea, uh, să fie păstrat legătura omului cu pământul efectivă. Da, deci... Problema, uitați-vă la parcelele astea de aici. Deci dacă ar fi să vină un investitor, să zicem, care ar dori să cumpere suprafețe mari de pământ, să zicem, să, să via aici 500 de hectare sau 300 de hectare din... Și eu nu vreau să vând, de exemplu. Eu n-aș vrea să vând, deși prețul cu care sunt în viața oamenii, este atractiv, să zicem, pentru oamenii de, uh, din zonă. Uh, eu, care aș, aș dori să continui activitatea pe terenul meu, aproape mi-ar fi imposibil, nu? Uh, dacă în jurul meu, eu aș rămâne ca o insulă în, în, și în jurul meu ar fi cumpărat, să zic, tot pământul de către un investitor. Well, basically big investors from all over Europe coming here right now because financially it's very attractive for them to settle and to uh, either to do farming or just to speculate on the price of the land, which is really, really cheap. Is it, and a lot of it is spe just speculation, you think? It is. Uh, it is a large proportion of, uh, of what's happening in Romania with land and what is a huge impediment for agroecological farmers who really want to settle and do farming, mm -hmm. for them this is an unfair competition that big investment funds, mm -hmm. for instance, big capital, is being poured into this because people bet that in 500, uh, uh, sorry, in 5, uh, 10 years the, the land price will uh, increase five-foldedly, 500%. 500%? Yeah. And we have major investors, major banks, in the financial institutions, which promise their investors, whoever puts the money on that bank, that I, will, I can get you a better, uh, better revenue than gold. Mm. This is how it's being marketed. Romanian land is being marketed and it's like being more profitable than gold yeah. right now. It's an asset. Fiecare zi mă întreb dacă merită să mai continui să, să, să mergem mai departe, să luptăm, pentru că am senzația de multe ori că războiul este deja câștigat de agrobusiness. Dar, dar din, din fericire, ceea ce ne, mă, mă face să, să, să merg înainte și să, să gândim pozitiv, este tot, tocmai gândul spre viitor, nu? Eu, ca și persoană, o să rup această comuniune, această legătură cu Pământul, eu consider că nu voi mai exista. Even if all Romanian peasants don't follow ecological methods like Dan, the Romanian tradition is deeply connected to the land, and land grabbing is bound to push the peasants out, leaving the countryside abandoned. But this situation, where land is no longer about food production, but instead just a financial asset, is nothing new. And in the UK, it's already an established reality. That also, of course, is a massive problem for new entrants because all this speculative money, hot money, is flooding into the countryside and is buying up the land for speculative reasons. You know, the, most of the people buying the land have got no footing in the land. They're not themselves farmers or um, are, are, are people who've got a pre-existing interest in land use. They're people who can see a buck being made. And my God, they, the money is unbelievable. 
the price of land, of agricultural land in Britain, has risen fourfold in 12 years. Now, you know, we're in this country very aware of how quickly house prices have risen. That's nothing by comparison to the speed of, of agricultural land prices. Yeah. They've just gone through the roof. So this is the reality for new ecological farmers. Speculation and unregulated markets leave little land for us and raise the prices too high. The gap between us, the small producers, and industrial agriculture looks like an abyss. And then there's also the unfairness of the European Union's farm subsidies, but that's a whole other journey on its own. For now, it's time to make my way back home where I hope to share what I've seen. Access in land can be a labyrinth. Sometimes I get the feeling that in the UK, finding land for ecological farming is a bit like asking for charity. But that can't really be how much we value our food in this country. Can it? After all, isn't the decision of how land should be used one to be made by society as a whole? So now I'm back home and I'm wondering where we are with our land search. What a shame it is to have to leave this place. But today is a special day and I expect we'll be hearing some news. Today, I'll discover that we do have something important here and that we have the ability to change things for the better. Um, we live in a society which thinks it can plunder the whole world for, for food from wherever we feel like. We think we can buy everything at any season and uh, if we're aiming to live off our own land that isn't really the way. We need to reconnect a bit with um, what we're actually growing in Britain now. And I'd like to hand over to Alison to um, update us on the land search. So over to Alison. Well, it's been really good because with all the members' support, we have managed to find a new three-acre plot of land. Because the community wants it, uh, it looks like something's going to happen.